people who interact on a regular basis tend to synchronize their beliefs. One reason for this is that it makes communication easier. The more information you share, the less there is to communicate. It also creates a kind of collective intelligence. If you've ever seen a flock of birds or a school of fish, you have some idea of how that works. Each individual receives information from those around him, and he propagates that information to others. And this creates group behavior, such as the school of fish evading a predator. People flock in a physical space, but they also flock in a space of ideas. In a school of fish, each fish tends to synchronize his behavior with the other fish, and that creates group behavior. People synchronize not only their behavior, but also their beliefs. And that creates both group behavior and group belief systems. We get a lot of our information about reality from the people around us. Relying on others for information is a useful heuristic, but it has some disadvantages. It can lead to completely circular beliefs. Things everyone believes just because everyone else believes them. Religion is one example, but there are others as well, such as the dot-com bubble or the housing bubble. I call these circular beliefs social delusions. The process of generating them is groupthink. Social delusions are beliefs whose inductive basis is entirely social. That is to say, people believe them only because others believe them, not because they are accurate models of reality. If you look on YouTube or other social media, you will see a lot of people organizing into groups around social delusions. The group provides its members with a comforting delusion, and the members work together to perpetuate that delusion. It's collaborative self-deception. Almost always, the delusion involves a claim of moral and intellectual superiority. The people in the group are the wise and the good. Those outside are the foolish and the wicked. The social justice warriors are an example of such a group, but they are only one example. There are many others. MGTOWs, MRAs, gamer gators, nationalists, anarchists, all are prone to groupthink. I'm not saying you should never join a group, but if you do, you should be aware of how it can distort your view of the world. Membership in a group can be a way of denying individual agency and personal responsibility for your own failures. Let's say you are struggling in life. It would be difficult to get out of your troubles, and you might fail. In your depressed state, you meet a group of people who are in the same situation as you, and who tell you that your troubles are not your fault and are beyond your control. They are the fault of the world. Your failure is actually a virtue. It is proof of your moral superiority. You are above the lesser people who play that game and win. They are either fools or wicked. There is no need to work hard to improve yourself. It is the world that needs to be fixed, not you. The people in your group spend their time exchanging cherry-picked evidence about the world outside, evidence that fits the narrative of the group. Of course, such evidence is misleading. It is a biased sample, selected to confirm the group ideology. But it creates the illusion that you are still in contact with reality. After all, the evidence consists of facts about the world. Given those facts, you find it hard to understand how outsiders do not see things your way. They must be really stupid or really evil. Social delusions of superiority can be addictive. They make people feel good with no effort. The group provides more to its members than just the delusion of moral and intellectual superiority. It also provides them with the illusion of being part of a real social group. 
Humans are social animals. Our social instincts are designed to plug into a small primate group. But the modern world doesn't provide us with opportunities to exercise our social instincts in a natural environment. This creates alienation, a sense of detachment, and social frustration. In the same way that a cat needs to hunt even if it gets its food out of a can, a human being needs to plug into a small primate group. Real society consists of things like your job, the grocery store, your bank account, the traffic lights, etc. A real society is a work exchange system. An online cult is just an exercise in collaborative self-deception. It is just a way of creating an illusion. But it's a very compelling illusion. It makes you feel wanted. It gives you a sense of belonging as well as superiority. I've always been an outsider. As a child and as an adult, I've always resisted the pull of the group. I've always been on the outside looking in. And that gives me a different perspective on how groups work. Human social behavior has predictable patterns. Humans will organize themselves into small groups. Each group will have a mythos that justifies its existence and gives it a sense of superiority over other groups. These groups will then fight each other. They will fight each other either physically or verbally or in some other way. You can see this behavior pattern in politics, in high school, or in tribal warfare. It's the same basic pattern. You can see it on the web. Even though the interactions are virtual, the pattern is the same. So my challenge to you is this. Consider to what degree your view of the world is a social delusion.